Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to use conditional formatting to check some fields for their length. Okay, so I regularly use an Excel gradebook for my students. This makes it easy for me to put hyperlinks so I can click over and check on web pages, type comments into the Excel, and then I'll do a mail merge to email this information out to the individual students. So I'm creating comments um, in one, two, or three columns sometimes. However, when I do a mail merge, the text length data can't exceed 255 characters. Now there might be ways to trick the system and resort. However, that's problematic and I don't want to have to try to think and resort every time. What I do want to have happen though is Excel just to alert me visually that I've typed more than 255 characters and then I can easily do something else. I can shorten that statement or I can break it up into multiple st uh, statements or something like that. So I've got a gradebook page open and I've got some uh, pretend comments to various students here. Let's go and do the conditional formatting. So from, from my home ribbon, conditional formatting, and I'm going to create a new rule and I'm going to use a formula to determine which cells to format. It doesn't really matter which cell I've activated when I do this, by the way, because it's easy to customize afterward. In fact, we're going to have to do a little bit of editing after the fact. So I'm ready to go ahead and type in my formula right here in this box. And I'm going to go ahead and put in equals len for length. doesn't matter which I'm looking at. I can just look at the cell that I'm active on right now. What am I on? I'm on F8. I can do F8 or I could have clicked on a particular cell. If the length of F8 is greater than or equal to 255, you could just do greater than 255. I'm going to do greater than or equal just so I'm not pushing the envelope right there. If it's greater than or equal to 255, and I just change my format, I'll give myself um, a fill that's a uh, light yellow. I'll give myself a font that's using uh, red text. Click OK. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm not done yet because that's really only checking the field that I'm at. We can see if it works though. I'm not sure if I've got more than 255 characters, but let me see if I can't add a few more and we see that I do get that red text yellow formatting. But I want this to apply to all of my columns basically because throughout a term, throughout a semester, I'll keep adding new columns with new notes. I don't want to have to keep editing my conditional formatting. So I go back to my conditional formatting, manage rules, and I'll just say with this worksheet, and I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to edit that rule. A couple things I want to change. First, I definitely want to make sure this is a relative reference. You see that little F8 is relative, doesn't have the dollar signs to make it absolute. If you had clicked on a cell when you first created this, it may have made it into an absolute reference. You want it to be a relative reference. So I'm good with that. So that part is good. I'll click OK. But for the applies too, I want this to be different. So for the applies too, I'm going to have this be a big range and it doesn't really necessarily matter what you pick. I can just do like something A2 colon and then I usually just do um, dollar sign ZZ dollar sign um, and of course I, I typically don't have more than uh, 30 students per class so if I just do something like 35 it's good or you just do 100. Um, so now I'm going to apply this particular conditional formatting to the range A2 through ZZ100. That's going to be fine. I'll go ahead and click Apply, even though I could have just clicked OK. And now this is going to work at different fields. There we go. That one's breaking the rule. This one's breaking the rule. And if I do write a comment that starts to break it, and by the way, little tricks I do myself is I typically size the cell. So roughly if it's about three lines filled up, that's going to be a pretty good visual indicator that I can't go much further. But if I do break the rule, then I can go back and I can decide to shorten up my comment, use a little bit of abbreviation where I typed something full out, or I can add a new comment column and do that. But once I've got everything composed on my worksheet, then I can simply do my mail merge and send custom emails to each of the students with their own individual comments. Take care.